If you have After Effects and Illustrator, you can mimic whiteboard videos with this method I am about to show you. This method is a great substitute for Video Scribe or Doodly if you already own After Effects. You will need some sort of access to artwork. If you can create your own artwork in Illustrator, I have found that to be the best solution. By the end of this video, you should have all the knowledge you need to be able to create a whiteboard video in After Effects. If you find this video useful, be sure to like and subscribe. We create short films and other related video making content, so don't miss out. So let's get started on how to create a whiteboard video in After Effects. I'll walk you through step by step, then give you some more details for potential problems you may have and how to fix it. The first step is creating the artwork and preparing the artwork in Illustrator. I use Illustrator for multiple reasons. The main reason is that I'll be using the vector lines created in Illustrator to create my animations for Adobe After Effects. Make sure your artboard or document size is the same size as your composition in After Effects. So in this case, it's 1920 by 1080. I'll separate the artwork in layers. You'll want to use as many layers for the artwork for as many times you want the animated hand to draw on elements in the scene. I'll just hide some of these layers, for example, so you can see what is going on here. If you have vector artwork made with strokes, that is the best. All you need to do is select all your artwork. You can do that by pressing Command A, copying the artwork, and pasting it. You want to keep it separate. With this new artwork created, you want to select Command J, which will connect all the lines, join all the lines together. You'll want to turn off the strokes, and you can do that by coming over here and pressing this button. Or you can use the forward slash key, which is what I like to use. You will lose the vector line, so put it somewhere where you know you can find it again. Do this for each layer of your artwork. If you have artwork that is not made from strokes like this font, you can use the pencil tool or brush tool and trace over the artwork. You'll want to trace the artwork in the same direction you want the hand to follow the guidelines. You can connect multiple pieces together so the animation is in one sweeping motion or keep them separate and create multiple animations in one scene. That's up to you. Now let's go to After Effects. Here I'll import my Illustrator file as a new comp. So a really important note here is to be sure to import the files with the document size selected. Otherwise it will add way more work down the road, which I'll show you in the problem section later. Once the files are in, open up your composition. Uh, you may need to turn on, you may need to change the background here. So let's do that in composition settings and change the background color to white. There we go. Also, I did apply an effect in Illustrator, which I'll do here for the shade, which is multiply, just so it's, there we go. Now that we have our layers in here, we'll go back to Illustrator. I'll go to my outline layer to start. I'm gonna lock everything else so I don't select anything else. So I'm gonna select it, copy, Command C, come back to After Effects, Select my layer and hit Command V. It should create a mask. I'm just gonna go ahead and line that mask up. I can zoom in by using my scroll on my mouse and we are just gonna make sure that lines up grand. All right, I'm also just gonna highlight just this one layer for now. So next thing you're gonna wanna do is go to the effects and presets and look for stroke and throw that in there as well uh, I'm gonna zoom in here so I can see what's going on we want to change the brush size till it fills the entire artwork there we go we'll want to change the on original image to reveal original image and we want to animate we're gonna be animating the end 
percentage here. So we're gonna start at zero. We're gonna hit the stopwatch to create a keyframe, which you can see here if you press U. And we're gonna go down the timeline a little bit. Uh, let's say five seconds or so from zero to 100%, voila. Linear keyframes, here we go. This is what it looks like now. You can see the artwork being drawn on beautifully. All right. If you want, you can tighten up the artwork just a little bit by changing the brush size, but that looks pretty good. So to animate the hand, I have a video file created. You can create your own or you can download my assets blink, blinked, blinked below. I think a video hand looks a lot better than a still image. So that's what I'm going to be using. I'll bring it into my composition and it's a 4k file. So I do need to bring it down to size and I will be putting the anchor point right at the point where I think the marker is. I'm just going to rotate that. Roop. Okay. With my hand imported, I can now use it to create my animation. I'll come down to my outline layer. I'll select M on my keyboard so I can get my mask path that I created. And I'm going to select that. Going to hit Command C. Come back to my drawing hand. Hit P for position, select position, and paste. So isn't that beautiful? Now my path is on the path of the artwork. The timing will be off, so all we need to do is select the roving keyframes by selecting the first and final keyframes and lining them up with the start percentage keyframes. Again, so I need to have both keyframes visible. So I'm gonna hit U and I'm gonna zoom in on my timeline and I can select my last keyframe and if you hold down shift, you'll see that it locks to the other visible keyframe. So I'm holding down shift and it's going to line up to that first keyframe for me. And I'm going to do the same thing with this last keyframe in the roving section and it's going to snap right there for me. So now let's take a look at my animation. All right, pretty good. The video file itself does need a little bit of work. Um, so we're going to change that up just a little bit. I don't want it to be so slow and coming on. So I gotta, I'm going to stretch it to like 16%. Now let's see how that works. All right. So the hand does take a second to come in. So I am going to select my keyframes, go about to right where it comes on right about right there. All right, let's line up my keyframes again. Okay, now, now it should look good. <laughs> there we go. And then I'm just gonna cut it when it's finished. All right, so now let's take a look at that. All right, all right, looking good, looking good. So now I want to do that for each layer. So one thing I like to do is copy my stroke effect and paste it. So I don't have to add those keyframes again. So I can't remember if I said this before, you press M on the keyboard to bring up your mask and you press U to bring up your keyframes. So I had to stop the video really quickly. Uh, I cleaned up my timeline a lot. So you, what you can see now is instead of just adding the keyframes in the middle of the, the layer, I made sure to just add it at the very beginning. So it was a lot easier to see how things are lining up. So I'm going to go ahead and play the animation now. I'm going to speed it up in the edit just so you can see what we have thus far. And voila, we have our thing. I'm gonna do some extra effects here. 
to make it look more realistic and I'll explain that in a little bit. All right, so what I've done here is I've added a hand that's just stationary that looks like it's holding down the board. I feel like that helps sell the effect that someone is drawing this live. You know, this was a mistake. This was something that shouldn't be there, but it's their effect. So another thing that I did that's very, very subtle is I've added this drop shadow here. This shadow isn't the same as just dropping in a drop shadow. What I've done is I've created a transform on a fill layer, which will rotate depending on the position of the hand. So if it's up higher, the shadow will come into frame a little bit more. When it's further down on the Y value, it will kind of disappear a little bit. You can kind of see it getting thicker or smaller as it's going up or down. So that's the other effect I created. Um, another thing that I added was when I added another expression where if the hand is on the X value towards the left, it will rotate further. So you can see how my arm is extended a little bit further. It looks like I'm stretching to reach over there. That's the effect I wanted to create. Uh, and so when it's uh, closer to the other side, it will straighten out. So let's see which hand does that the best here. So yeah, so you can just see the logo, it's straighter. And then over there, we're stretching. Yeah, yeah. I'll show those expressions in the description. They're very easy. Now to talk about some common issues you may run across. All right, so one big mistake is importing your files wrong. So let's say you accidentally did it as layer size. This is what's gonna happen. Everything will seem like it's working. When you copy and paste it, it goes straight for the artwork, and that's great. However, when you try to paste your mask path on your position, it won't line up. And this is a lot harder to move than the mask is. So compared the two, which one I'd wanna move is not the position. You can see here, it's taking a long time for me to just move all those positions over. I actually moved it already. It's actually computing and trying to figure out how to put it there. So that's a huge mistake you don't wanna make. So another thing that might happen is if you have traced something brought it into After Effects and it's in reverse, like with text, you don't write backwards, you write forwards, right? So that's not good. So one way you can fix that with the work you've already put into place is going back to Illustrator, finding that path you used to bring over, going up to the file menu and selecting object, going to path, and selecting reverse path direction. So you can actually copy that, swap out this path that you have already, and now it should be going the opposite direction. There we go. So another mistake I've seen is when you select a path that has color or some kind of fill over it. If the opacity is set to zero, same thing will happen. So if I set that to zero, it looks like it's disappeared, but it does have a color on it. What will happen is if I try to bring that into After Effects, it creates multiple, multiple masks, which I don't need. I need one single mask. So you don't want to do that either. All right, so another problem I've seen is if I'm moving my keyframes around and I accidentally select a roving keyframe and I adjust it or something happens there, I have now lost my animation. So the animation will not time up correctly. You can see it's already too far ahead in the animation. So you gotta be careful when you're moving your roving keyframes around that you don't move anything in the middle. Uh, if you do, you do have to just remove it and try again with copying and pasting the correct keyframes in the right order. So this isn't really a problem, but just another little quick tip for you when you're tracing in Illustrator is your paintbrush settings or pencil settings to have keep selected and edit selected paths. And when you're drawing, what's going to happen is it's going to keep everything selected. But if you want to keep 
the path going, you can select the end there and keep going and it'll just add to it. But you gotta keep in mind that if you draw the selected path, it may delete your work. So what I like to do when I am drawing is make sure there's a little lip at the end that I can bring over and save it for drawing again. So I can select it and keep drawing. So again, those, uh, those settings were keep selected and edit selected paths. I was able to draw this with my iPad and my Apple Pencil, but I also have a drawing pad that I've used for years. I don't have a preference on which one you should use, but I will link to some in the description so you can choose one if you want, if you want to start creating your own artwork. So I hope you've enjoyed that tutorial. I do have those links in the description that you can go download the assets or download the video files. Feel free to like and subscribe to our channel. We like to create short films and another video and filmmaking content so you won't want to miss out. Good night.